Namibia is no stranger to protests. Locals have always made it a point to protest when they feel aggrieved. For example, the marches against phosphate mining, not forgetting the demonstrations against corruption in the fishing industry. In 2016, some Namibians publicly expressed their dissatisfaction towards the construction of a new parliament building that was going to cost more than $2 billion. In another display of solidarity, Namibians came out in numbers to support shoprite workers who were to be sued by their employer for $4.5 million over an illegal strike. Sociologist Professor Lucy edwards Yao says protests are an integral part of democratic political expression. It's about bringing concerns to the attention of political decision makers. That right should be defended by governments and should be protected by governments even when the protests are against that very same government and that is part of of this political uh, expression. In 1988, student uprisings changed the socio-political landscape of Namibia. For the first time in the history of the national liberation struggle, young Namibians openly challenged the colonial regime and all that it stood for. The phosphate mining saga was so widespread that the fishing industry is now opposing the mining of phosphate in court. The fish rod scandal resulted in Namibians taking to the streets after thousands of workers lost their jobs due to corruption. Many also marched against the granting of bail of those accused of corrupt practices and all these protests fulfilled the purpose. Due to the massive support by Namibians, ShopRite was forced to withdraw its court case against the workers. Professor Edwards Yao says even though there are temporary successes, the broader issues Namibians have been protesting about, such as economic, environmental and gender justice, still persist today. The highest bidder gets the land and often the highest bidder are these or very wealthy uh, property developers. So ordinary citizens, and especially young people, have little chance of uh, purchasing that land. So that requires a much deeper intervention around housing and land policies that are more sensitive to poor people and that are more redistributive. And so that requires a much, much deeper intervention and a, a, a government that accepts and understands that the market has failed to provide adequate and decent housing to all its citizens. Sometimes protests that start off peacefully can turn violent in a blink of an eye. Reasons range from the infiltration of criminal elements to the suppression of expression by law enforcement and governments. People also get violent when they feel that their issues are being ignored. Professor Edwards Yao says protests should not be seen as a sign of political disorder. In the words of Voltaire, I may not approve what you are saying, but I will defend to death your right to say it. And so we must all defend whether we agree with the issues. Women have gone on protests about uh, the legalization of abortion. They have gone on protests uh, about gender-based violence. If you are a man and you are not subject to violence and you are not in the position to have an unwanted pregnancy, you still have to defend the right of women to protest the issues or any other group who are expressing themselves peacefully and lawfully. Francis Shahama, NBC News, Ventuk.